I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. They're now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on oh. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. And do stay with us for the next half hour as we bound through the undergrowth of news, beating our chests like gorillas in the mist. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. And can I just add a quick shout out to the one sure. and only Andrew Lee, who's an amazing Chelsea pensioner who I met in the pub yesterday, who's a big fan of this show. Well, there you go. Hello, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you for morning, tuning Andrew. in. Uh, now, uh, I was just doing my sort of gorillas in the mist there. You're so. more like a spectacled lemur. Though. Yeah, a spectacle. <laughs> well, you said gorillas in the mist, so I was I doing know. my gorilla yeah. impression. It's really good, isn't it? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, half an hour of headlines to throttle through, so uh, let's get going. Obviously, massive story at the weekend where Iran uh, rained down more than 300 drone bombs and missiles onto Israel. Uh, I guess the only story in town now is how does... Israel react? Mm. What will it do? What will it do next? And when will it do it? Uh, your well, feelings? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, what's fascinating, I stayed up to watch it a bit like, I don't know, popcorn. We had a plate of cheese and everything lying in bed, well, watching uh, the live well, pictures fun, coming in from it? Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. But I think, you know, one of the interesting things about this story that everyone seems to have missed is you had planes taking off from Qatar, you had planes taking off from Jordan, you had planes taking off from Iraq, of course, America's got a big air base uh, in Kurdistan in Erbil. You had America, US, France, you had countries coming together, but most importantly, including the Arab world to protect Israel. Now, I think everyone's talking about the doom and gloom of are we about to face World War Three? But what I realised with all of this is Iran is a pariah state. Other than that warmonger in Russia, nobody wants to help Iran. Frankly, all of the Gulf states are saying we'd rather have luxury hotels and resorts, world leading airlines and host international sports matches than be dragged into your tyrannical, autocratic, weird religious wars. Um, so I think Iran are by themselves. And I hope actually based on that, Israel goes, do you know what, what's the point retaliating? Because not a single one of those missiles or drones had any meaningful impact. The vast majority, I think all but about one, were intercepted and brought down. So that is a win. And on, you know, for the first time, I think, in my life, I'm actually going to agree and repeat what Joe Biden said, which is chalk this up as a win, Israel, because it is. If you now go back in and try and make a point by bombing Tehran, this is going to escalate and Lord knows where we go from there. Well, uh, I hate to tell you, uh, Israel, that, um, uh, Alex, that you are um, echoing exactly what your hero, David Cameron, I said. Thought he was Take it away, morning. David. <laughs> Say the same as Alex. Go away, Mr. Cameron. Do you think that Israel should take the win? I think that's right. I mean, we should first of all reflect that this was a pretty uh, significant attack. I mean, 110 ballistic missiles, 36 cruise missiles, 185 drones. And so, of course, Israel has every right to respond as an independent sovereign country being attacked in this way. Um, but I think we're very anxious to avoid escalation and to say to our friends in Israel, it's, it's a time to think with, with head as well as heart. I'll tell you what, I, I'd never want to uh, be the Prime Minister of Israel because every other world leader wants to tell you what to do at every <laughs> single stage. Uh, but uh, I think there's two things to say here. One, I think Israel will respond. Uh, I mean, how would we like it? If, if, if uh, some foreign power had just rained 300 missiles onto Britain and our Prime Minister said to us, well, you know, uh, we shouldn't right. really retaliate, you know, for the geopolitical sensitivity of this. People of Britain will go, retaliate, do something about that, which is why I think mm. Netanyahu would. And the other thing, uh, well worth uh, bearing in mind, everyone's going, what a triumph for Israel's defence system. 
that it shot out 99% of these uh, drone missiles and uh, ordinary missiles out of the sky. Yes, uh, there's the Iron Dome, there's various other, but uh, Israel uh, was able to uh, ward off this attack, A, because of intelligence from the Americans, uh, and B, uh, because of help from Britain, France, and other Western countries going up into the sky to blow these up. Mm. So Israel needed a lot of help from yeah. the West. So let's not get too carried yeah. away with the fact it's got this impenetrable defence system because it hasn't. That mm. situation out there uh, with Iran and Israel uh, now trading uh, attacks on each other uh, could be very, very sensitive to say the least. Indeed. No, I actually speaking to a number of people who work in the American military over the weekend and quite a number of them are champing at the bit to go and uh, rain fury on Tehran. They are the ne'er-do-wells in the region. They are behind all of it. They're between Hamas and the Houthis and Hezbollah. They're the big destabilizers of the region and world peace. But like I said earlier, they don't have many friends in the region. And it goes beyond, I think, the old sort of Sunni Shia proxy wars. This comes down to other countries saying, do you know what? We're done with the madness. We want to progress. We want to develop. We want to make money. So I just hope that there is some good to come out of uh, what we saw at the weekend, which is not a single missile managed to really hit Israel and the, the team of countries that came together to prevent that from happening. Yeah, and also bear in mind that all Iran could manage was a few drones. I mean, that was it, uh, flying a thousand miles. They took it like eight hours to get there. I know. So it was, uh, it was heavily telegraphed, this attack. Uh, uh, some say on purpose. So uh, you're right, Alice, this could be uh, what we've seen over the past few days could be stylized. You know, uh, Iran is allowed to retaliate for that attack a couple of weeks ago by Israel. Uh, Israel's done its retaliation, so the world does not want it to retaliate again. But my guess is Israel being Israel, yeah. Netanyahu being Netanyahu, they will uh, respond. They want the last word. Uh, now, obviously, much, much more of that uh, this afternoon on Crosstalk, 1 p.m. <laughs> um, but uh, in the meantime, uh, some stories never go away, do they? Uh, and it just keeps on getting worse for Angela Rayner. Uh, what happened yesterday was a former aide who worked for her up in Manchester basically has gone to Manchester Police and said, in terms of her domestic arrangements, when she said she wasn't living with her husband, she was living at the house she bought on Maggie's uh, Maggie Thatcher's right to buy system, uh, they said, well, she just wasn't. And this, this aide... Mm. is saying she's basically lying. Yeah. So that is someone who was on the scene working with Angela there, uh, has been named, has gone to the uh, police. His name is Matt Finnegan uh, and uh, basically has shot... Uh, holes all the way through Angela's story. Yeah, I mean, what, what a, a new detail that I hadn't quite realised about this that sort of stuck out to me over the weekend was the fact that she carried on this lie, if, you know, alleged lie, for five years. This wasn't just a case of a six-month overlap and did I move here, when mm -hmm. did I move here, oh, I may have got the form wrong. For five years, she pretended she was living there when she wasn't and was on the electoral register there when she wasn't. And it's not like, oh, I didn't realise. I'm sorry, you get the big polling card thing. You get the letter saying, is this where you live? It's a criminal offence if you don't, if you give the wrong address. They give you plenty of opportunity to make it very clear what your official residence is. So, uh, I mean, where does she go from she, here? Well, she denies all wrongdoing, says she hasn't done anything wrong. She says she's got a letter from tax and legal experts uh, telling her she hasn't done anything wrong. We're asking to see it, but she doesn't seem to want to... Show so it to everyone. Need she to keeps have that letter if you hadn't been doing But she wrong. announced, I've got this letter, and that yeah. exonerates me. So we said, OK, let's have a look at the letter. It would save the police investigation goes, everything, And she goes, why it? should I show you my personal tax returns? Well, Angela, we didn't ask you to show you or us your personal tax returns. We asked us you to show us this letter you say that exonerates you. So yeah. we want to see that. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Keir Starmer keeps Angela at uh, arm's length to stay the least, but still some of the suckers in the Labour Party are going out to defend uh, uh, Angela Rayner in all the trouble she's in, although, as I say, she stresses she's done nothing wrong. She's looking forward to being exonerated by this police investigation. She welcomes, that police investigation. She welcomes she this it. chance to call clear their name. They always do, don't they? Anyway, yesterday's Labour sucker on the media rounds uh, support sticking up for Angela Rayner was Yvette Cooper. Take it away, Ms. Cooper.
It has been very clear. She will provide all of the information and she's very happy, not just very happy to answer questions from the police or, or HMRC, but actually she is very keen to because it allows her to set out all of the facts, not, not, not the sort of gossip, not the different allegations that we've had from Conservative MPs. And uh, we understand this is the run up to local elections. We have seen them do this before. Hang on a second. Uh, I thought that she'd done absolutely nothing wrong. The picture seems to be changing. Right, doesn't exactly. It? I mean, you, I'm so keen to be part of a police investigation into me. Lie. No one would be keen for the police to be investigating. Them. Brilliant. But the police was... are investigating Yay, me. Woo! Yes. There's absolutely no need for the police to be investigating you if you'd just shown that blimmin' letter already. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's beginning to. The, the net is closing, isn't it? It on, really on is. Radar. She says that if she gets nicked, if she does get found guilty, of avoiding capital gains tax and uh, breaking electoral law, she will resign as uh, the uh, deputy leader. Leader, uh, when uh, when you, if you ask Keir Starmer, have you seen this uh, crucial letter that defends your deputy? <laughs> no, I haven't. Mm. Oh, why is that, Keir? Yeah, he always well, just hasn't I seen bet. it. I no, bet Keir did. Starmer saying his he, prayers every night that she does doesn't, get found guilty. He doesn't want to her. see it. He doesn't want to see it because he, he wants to like each other, He actually. wants plausible deniability. It's an old political game. Now, uh, Sunak, uh, Rwanda scheme, not doing too well, but apparently <laughs> oh, he's also so owning up, uh, uh, eyeing up other places uh, that we might send. Uh, Yay. Uh, Armenia, Ivory Coast, Costa Rica, Botswana have all entered talks with the UK government uh, in what is described as a third country asylum processing deal. So uh, not just Rwanda, all these other countries too. It's a back of a fag packet policy. Yep. I, I'll be amazed if it actually happens. Yep. Let's see, maybe it will. Uh, actually, the Rwanda safety bill, you know, the one where the mm -hmm. uh, parliament just went, yeah, Rwanda's a safe country. And then that became law and therefore fact. Uh, that is doing its final week of ping ponging in the House of Lords mm -hmm. this week. Um, but then what are we going to have? The Armenia safety bill, the Ivory Coast safety <laughs> bill, the Costa Rica safety bill, mm -hmm. the Botswana the safety bill. The of the bill. rest of the world Tell safety you what, bill. Ivory Coast has had a spicier recent history than Rwanda, if you're honest. Um, but this is just mad, isn't it? This whole idea that you can have this industrial movement of people, you know, the huge waves of inward migration, and then sort of flightfuls of people going to other parts of the world. It's just bonkers. Stop the boats. That's what border's all about. Not saying, oh, come here and then be sent somewhere else. No, you stop them. You defend our borders. It is very clear. It is very simple. That is our right as a country. Turn the boats around. Yeah, well, uh, also uh, Sunak is uh, hitting out uh, at the European Court of Human Rights, European Convention on Human Rights, over its recent ruling that uh, all governments uh, who belong to the ECHR, which includes us, 28 countries, I believe, uh, have a, a duty to protect their citizens from the effects of climate change. Uh, Rishi Sunak says that that is a complete overreach mm. and an illegitimate ruling. Well, uh, just leave the ECHR, just leave uh, it. Rishi, then you wouldn't have to worry oh, about it, Do you want to hear you? something really yeah, funny? This is like, absurd. So there's a Labour peer, can't remember her name, but she's putting an amendment on the safety of Rwanda bill and all this sort of mm. mad policy making, that there must be exemptions for people who have been the victim of human trafficking. Wow. What do you think are. every single person who's paid a trafficker to come over yeah. on a small boat could say, I've been the victim of human trafficking? They, I mean, they all you, tend to say that. How did you get here? Human trafficker, wasn't it? Oh, well, you don't have to go to Rwanda yeah. then. Yeah. It's just, it's it a farce. Will, yeah, that would completely negate the entire scheme. So thank you very much, Labour PRS, whoever you are. Whoever you are. Uh, but uh, useless intervention there. Uh, very, very pathetic indeed. But what is pathetic to me is, you know, Sunak keeps making these statements about the ECH. Oh, they can't do this. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. overreach. This isn't within their remit. Why do you keep torturing yourself by paying sucker to this outfit, the ECHR, <laughs> Rishi? Better idea, just leave. And you know what really gets my goat about all of this? I think it was Theresa May as a Home Secretary back in 2014 when old spade face of uh, Sheeping Norton was the Prime Minister. Um, and she was the one who proposed a British Bill of Rights and leaving the ECHR 10 years ago. Why do they keep gaslighting us? Just do it. Because the thing is, in France, the way the French legal system is set up is very much like the French mindset, which is it's all about interpretation. Buff. Oh, mm.
Um, whereas we just take everything literally and judges are the ones who then say, oh, well, it says here in the small print of the ECHR, therefore we've got to do this, this Steve. and this. The only way is to leave it. Yeah. The I, only way. I just, but when we, if we leave the ECHR, it doesn't mean to say we're abrogating human rights. You right. don't have to belong to a big foreign club to believe in human rights. In fact, we invented the European Convention on Human Rights yeah. way back in uh, the late 40s, early 50s. So uh, we've been around uh, on the uh, human rights bus for a long, long time. So we can do it ourselves. We don't need to be in the ECHR. Now, uh, let's move on. Uh, let's get to, uh, to trans issues, of course. Yeah. Uh, Business Secretary Kemi Badenoch uh, wrote a piece in the Sunday Times yesterday blasting gender ideology mm. and lashing out at the cowardice shown by public institutions over gendered ideology, yeah. particularly the police. I love Kemi. And do you know why I love Kemi? She is the only politician that I can think of right now who actually says things and has opinions and has convictions and scrutinises things. I did that um, awful programme, Any Questions, on... Uh, Friday night, mm -hmm. um, the BBC Radio 4 show. Actually, it's not an awful programme. It's a perfectly nice programme. Apart from the audience, it's sort of a load of middle-class quinoa-eating Guardian Easters who booed my very existence. But never mind. I've oh. got a thick skin. <laughs> but what I noticed yeah, I sitting well. on that panel... Boo! boo. <laughs> you know, I believe in God. Boo! boo. Um, what I noticed I believe sitting in, on... I'm a patriot. Boo. boo! I love my country. Boo! boo. I want to seal the borders. Boo! <laughs> it was. It was just BBC like, honestly, audience. There was, there was nothing I could say. Um, but I noticed everybody else on that panel just spoke in jargon. They spoke in absolute white noise platitudes. I had no idea what any of the other panelists answered on anything. I don't think they knew what they answered on anything because this is politicians now. They have no conviction, no spine, and no sense of scrutiny. Yeah. Those are the three prerequisites for being a lawmaker and Kemi's right when she says instead what you got all these independent quangos these so-called sort of you know public bodies that are yeah. supposed to scrutinize things and they're the ones who become completely politicized because politicians aren't doing their jobs yeah, anymore we, so uh, she, she, she loses says a lot that of uh, politicians uh, many institutions have become captured by a minority of ideological activists. She's exactly right. Yeah. The trouble is, Kemi, it's your government's fault. In 13 years of Tory government, you've let these woke warriors take over the country and just shrugged your shoulders. You should have been a lot more vigilant Then we wouldn't be in this mess. Mm. Uh, we've had a Tory government and gradually uh, under their eyes, under their watch, this country has turned into a sort of woke left-wing oh, yeah. hellhole. Yep. And it's your fault, not your particular fault, Kemi. No, because she's your, good. We it's like your her. government's it fault. It's, it's wet like Rishi Sunak and David Cameron. And actually, this next story actually, I yeah. think, exemplifies yeah. another massive area of slippage. When you see how many people are going off sick. 11 million sick notes a year now. Record. A load of them are for people with, uh, you know, so-called mental health issues. This is one in four adults. One in four adults, and I'm not going to work, they're off sick. And these PIP things that you can get, um, where you just get a letter from the doctor saying, oh, you know, I don't feel well, I've got anxiety, I can't go to work. You don't need proper medical evidence. You're entitled to about 800 quid or something. You can actually work at the same time. It doesn't prevent you from having a second job. We're all being taken for absolute mugs, yeah. and this needs to stop. Here's this needs to be need shaken to. up in Here's a big way. Here's what we need way. to do. Yeah, this is what my idea. It's a good idea, I think. Yeah. Doctors, right, who write these sick yeah. notes, Basically, people come and say, can I have a sick note? They go, yeah, boom, like that. Right. Why not tell doctors, look, uh, this may be, so your verdict here may be subject to a secondary check. Mm. And if you're found to be wrong, you're in trouble. So in other words, they have to, when somebody comes in and says, can I have some time off because I'm sick or I've got mental health problems or whatever, the doctors don't just go, yeah, OK, fine, here's a note. They have to take it seriously. They have to diagnose, is this person sick are, or are they swinging the lead? Yeah. I think doc doctors are just clearly but just writing 11 million sick notes. If I went to my year. doctor tomorrow, I mean, if I could actually go and see my doctor tomorrow, pigs might fly, and said, I'm having a real difficult time at work, the anxiety levels are off the charts, I'm not sleeping at night, I'm getting terrors and panic 
panic attacks. It's leaving me feel breathless. Sometimes I feel dizzy and like I'm going to pass out when I'm on the tube coming in in the morning because I'm so worried about sitting alongside Kevin and it's just too much. Yeah, mental health. I bet you I could probably get a sick note. Of course you get, yeah. And well, that was a pantomime. I, don't think I they, just acted that. I don't think they think about it. And I think, I think we have to make doctors think about it. Yeah. Stop just handing them out like confetti. Exactly. Because people are swinging the lead. It's this costing. Is ten, this is a work now, shy, so the, uh, lazy nation. 180 billion, the amount that sick yeah. notes cost us is as much as we pay for the NHS to exist. Yeah, it's well, mad. Well, right, let's move on. Let's go across the Atlantic. Donald oh, Trump's also mad. big trial starts today, the Stormy Daniels trial. Uh, basically, he's accused of paying her hush money, about $30,000 or $130,000, uh, to stay quiet about their alleged affair. He still says it didn't happen. She says it did. Uh, and that is being seen as a way that Donald Trump manipulated the news agenda uh, to swing the election his way. So he stands accused of uh, electoral manipulation. Uh, now, this trial... It's very, very weak. It's politically motivated. Mm. Uh, but it's going to go on for eight weeks and he has to turn up every day and he's not allowed to campaign during that period. Oh, uh, yeah, fair, but do you know what? It's going to, his name will be the only name in the newspapers anyway, so does he need to campaign? He'll be the most uh, talked about person in America and around the world. But do you know what's interesting, yeah. actually? Last week, you were talking about the O.J. Simpson trial after that ne'er-do-well died. And you pointed out that when it comes to American trials, jury selection... Is the key. Only thing that now, this is going to be a trial with a jury. And it seems to me, stands to reason, that if you're a Republican, you'll exonerate Trump. And if you're a yeah. Democrat, you won't. So this jury selection almost represents a tiny little mini rigged election, well, doesn't yeah. it? But it'll, it's pointless. The jury selection will probably go on for a week. It goes on for ages. Horse trading about juries, as I said, as you rightly say, Alex is the most crucial part of a trial. So both lawyers, prosecution and defence, trying to load the jury mm -hmm. with people they think will favour their client. Uh, so uh, that'll be going on for a while uh, and we will follow this trial with great interest. But here's Donald at the weekend uh, at one of his amazing rallies. On Monday in New York City, I will be forced to sit fully gagged. I'm not allowed to talk. Can you believe it? They want to take away my constitutional right to talk. I have a crooked judge. This has never happened before, by the way. You do know that, right? Fully gagged before a highly conflicted and corrupt judge who suffers from TDS. Does anyone know what TDS is? Correct. Trump derangement syndrome. <laughs> so, so millions of people could suffer. get a sick note for that in the UK and not the, have to go to work. The Democrats' uh, policy, uh, their campaigning policy, the last time they were up against Trump for the presidential election was, well, you, it's Donald Trump. You can't vote for him. He's horrible. Yeah. Well, guess what? They all did. So uh, the Democrats' problem is they don't realise that millions and millions and millions of Americans do not suffer from Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, they like Donald Trump. And until the Democrats work that out, they're going to lose every yep. election to him, if you ask me. Right, now, uh, in happy news... No, it's not happy news yeah. at all. Uh, Islamic State seem to be back on the march up to all sorts of things. And according to a particular report from undercover reporters from the Israeli news channel, uh, they've been told by some bouncers in a mosque in Malmo in Sweden that there are planned attacks on the Eurovision Song Contest there. Doesn't surprise me at all. It's not exactly the sort of thing that your beardy weedies enjoy, is it? All the LGBT rights mm -hmm. and uh, happiness. Um, but also, Sweden has probably become the basket case of Europe when it comes to massive migrant gun-toting gangs, capital of rape in Europe. It's in a real mess, Sweden. So I wouldn't be surprised if there are many threats against the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, Pretty let's, grim uh, times. Uh, well, let's talk about ADHD, shall we? Uh, apparently... The number of people suffering from ADHD uh, going to the NHS uh, in 10 years has gone up by 41,000%. Uh, uh, so 10 years ago, we were dealing with 700,000 people suffering from attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Uh, we are now uh, spending £292 million a year on it. Uh, and uh, so if you identify a problem, a lot of people start suffering from it. But, you know, if 
you've got ADHD, does that mean you can't go to work? Of course you can. People who are neurodivergent been going to work and doing bits and bobs throughout human history. You don't have to sit at home and just take money from the taxpayer. And also, everyone now has got an acronym, don't they? OCD, ADHD, PTSD. Do you know what I've got? What? NDMI. What's no that? discernible mental illness. Yeah, well, me too. Uh, actually, although people might argue with that. <laughs> Uh, uh, now, Hugh Edwards seems to have gone back and moved in with his mum in Wales. Oh, dear, poor Hugh. Uh, so you were talking about people just uh, being at home, uh, living off the taxpayer. Well, I suppose <laughs> if you could call a licence fee payer a taxpayer, well, it is a television tax. Mm -hmm. uh, he's still getting £440,000 a year, uh, living with his mum in Wales, uh, drawing this vast salary. When are the BBC going to get yeah. rid of it? He has not said a word on screen for now 10 months ever since having to step down because of an investigation right. into his alleged well, inappropriate behaviour towards younger members of staff. They've not even started this blooming investigation because apparently Hugh is too ill for this investigation to happen. This is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I remember Hugh Edwards' wife came out really supportive of him in the beginning. I think if he's gone to live with older yeah, Mam G in Wales, wife, that's yeah. probably not the case anymore, is it? But, um, I mean, just get this sorted out. With that amount of money, he's got a big BBC yeah. pension anyway. He's nearing the end of his career. Just put him out to pasture. Stop paying him. This is and, mad. And stop, and stop charging us. We're paying for this guy. Right. He's not working. £440,000. He's getting £100,000 a year more than people People like Clive Myrie and uh, Rita Chakrabarty. So it's ridiculous. He's Absolutely not working. Bonkers. Do something about it. It's our money. Uh, uh, let's finish on the amazing feud between our colleague Sharon Osborne and <laughs> Amanda Holden. Uh, I wouldn't usually do this kind of story, but it really has exploded all over the newspapers. Uh, basically, uh, Amanda uh, took umbrage at Sharon and Louis Walsh having a go at Simon Walsh when they were on mm. Celebrity Big Brother. Uh, Amanda said, I hated seeing certain people in reality shows dissing Simon. He's the person who's given them all the chances, given them a lot of money and lifestyle uh, they probably wouldn't have had. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, Sharon has hit, in her inimitable fashion, has hit back uh, big time all over Twitter saying, don't get me wrong, uh, I enjoyed working on these shows. Uh, she, yes, Simon paid me very well, probably more than what you're receiving, Am Amanda. But all of that, my darling, went on a few handbags. Yeah, but also in a big missive, because it was like a missive on Twitter. She also pointed out I was a massively successful uh, music manager yeah, she was before as Simon well. Cal brought me along to the programme. So put she that was. in your pipe and smoke it, blind date ex wife of Les Dennis, who looks like haunted Tupperware. Yeah, yeah she was, she was uh, very successful before. Cow came into her life, so uh, interesting feud. Love a showbiz feud. Uh, no feuds between us, though, Alex, because sadly we have come to the end of the show. Thank you for tuning in. You know what's coming up at one o'clock, and you know what we're going to do. Cross Talk 1 p.m. Up next is Julia H Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Whirl> missing. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that